Hi everyone, welcome back to science. I'm so glad you decided to join me again today. My name is Miss Catherine and we're going to continue in our Matter and Energy and Ecosystems unit with Lesson 1.4. Here are the materials that you will need today. Pause the video and gather what you need. If you are following along online, here is your click path to get to Lesson 1.4. And here's how I would like you to set up your paper. Even if you are working online today, please have a piece of paper in front of you as we're going to figure out some really important things today. We want to keep track of our discoveries so we have that information later. We're going to continue thinking about this question from last time. Where do the energy storage molecules in an ecosystem come from? In last class, we were reading about energy storage molecules in our Sunlight and Life article set. And in the second paragraph, we noted that these molecules that we're calling energy storage molecules include things called glucose, starch, and fat. So if we really want to think about where these things come from, let's consider, well, what are they? And let's investigate these types, glucose, starch, and fat, these types of energy storage molecules a little bit more carefully. So what I have for you on the screen down below are four information cards for you to obtain some information about four different kinds of energy storage molecules. And I know that they're really small, so in a moment, I'm gonna make them large on your screen. Before I do that, I want you to take note of the questions that I'm gonna ask that you consider as I show you these cars a little bit larger and obtain that information about our energy storage molecules. I want you to think about what are some of these different types? What are they called? What are some differences between them since they are different types of energy storage molecules after all? And then what are some of the similarities between them? Are you ready? Here's our first one, glucose. Again, we're taking note, what is it? So we can figure out some similarities and differences among the different kinds. Our second one today is called starch. And then we have fat. And finally, glycogen. Now that you had a chance to observe all four a little larger, pause the video and answer these three questions. If you need to go back and see them again, do that now. So what did you notice? One thing that I saw when I was looking at each of our four different energy storage molecules is that they all come from or are found in different places. Some are made by just producers, like starch. Some can be made by producers and consumers and decomposers, like fat. I also noticed that every one of them contained this thing called carbon, along with hydrogen and oxygen. And I'm gonna highlight carbon for us because I've heard in the past, scientists refer to life here on Earth as carbon-based. And carbon is so important to all living things, whether it's plants or animals. So I wanna make sure that we notice that together and know what carbon is. It's a type of atom that makes up molecules such as carbon dioxide, which I know is in our atmosphere, as well as these energy storage molecules. Go ahead and pause the video and record this definition on your sheet, as well as some examples of where to find it. We just determined that all energy storage molecules contain a atom that's really important to all life on Earth called carbon. Yesterday, when we were reading about photosynthesis, 
carbon also came up because carbon in the form of carbon dioxide along with water are our two reactants needed for this photosynthesis chemical reaction. And we noted yesterday that photosynthesis only happens inside of plant cells or inside of producer cells in a part called a chloroplast. So let's zoom in a little bit more carefully inside of one of these plant cells in this chlor chloroplast so that we can see more clearly the connection between carbon and carbon dioxide and the carbon in our energy storing molecules. If you have access to the SIM and Amplify Online, go ahead and pause the video right now and use that SIM to watch what happens inside of a chloroplast, which is a part of, again, the producer cell where photosynthesis occurs. Then gonna ask that you record your ideas about these three questions. How are the molecules inside the chloroplast different before and after photosynthesis? What does this mean about the process of photosynthesis? And what does this model show about our energy storage molecules and where they come from? If you don't have access to Amplify Online to use the SIM, let's look at it together. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my SIM. I already have it ready. And if you're accessing the SIM on your own, remember there's this little shortcut here in your stack menu to just jump right to the SIM. If you don't wanna go through that whole click path. Um, so since all we're looking at are producers here and what's happening inside of the chloroplast during photosynthesis, I'm just going to press play and I'm going to go over here to producers and press view cell. So remember, let's remind ourselves of our questions. We're looking at molecules in the chloroplast before and after and what this means for photosynthesis. So here's my chloroplast. So there's some molecules. Oh, something just happened. What are you noticing? What's happening right now? What's inside the chloroplast? What just happened? Let's check that out again. So one thing I'm noticing is that I have these purple things up here, which are water, and those square things, which are carbon dioxide, going into my chloroplast. However, what's coming out of the chloroplast are those little circles of oxygen and those orange ones with the black dots, those energy storage molecules. There they are. So that tells me that I only have certain things coming into my chloroplast, that water, that carbon dioxide, just like this image from our reading, those go in, but then they transform through that chemical reaction of photosynthesis to glucose and oxygen once the process is over. Now that we observed a plant cell carefully, let's reflect upon our noticings by explaining the process of photosynthesis and what it means for our energy storing molecules. Pause the video and complete the following sentences by filling in the blanks. How did you do? I said, photosynthesis is done by producers. If you use the word plants here, go back and add this vocabulary term, producers, because we're going to be seeing it a lot. This process requires energy from sunlight, as well as carbon dioxide and water from abiotic or non-living matter. Photosynthesis makes oxygen and energy storage molecules for an ecosystem. These key concepts are going to be very important for us to be able to explain what happened in the Econauts 
failed biodome experiment. This idea that carbon dioxide contains carbon, which is abiotic matter, and that carbon is also a part of energy storing molecules, which are biotic matter. And that during the process of photosynthesis, producers make energy storage molecules using carbon from carbon dioxide and energy from sunlight along with water. This process of photosynthesis moves carbon from an abiotic to a biotic state of matter. Please record these key concepts on your paper underneath your ideas from this lesson. And pause the video to give yourself time to do that. Wow, we've really figured out a lot about this investigation question. We know that energy storage molecules are a product of a photosynthesis chemical reaction. We know that they contain carbon. We know that that carbon in them comes from carbon dioxide. And we know that this process of photosynthesis only happens in plant cells or producer cells because those are the only kinds of cells that have chloroplasts. Let's reflect on today's lesson by sharing what you figured out about energy storage molecules in an ecosystem and where they come from with a family member or a friend on video chat before next time. If you'd like an additional challenge, complete activity four in lesson 1.4 in Amplify Online. See you next time.